This case study shall analyze a fluid buffer tank level PNID control scenario and how to implement a feed forward PNID control scheme to improve its performance. The process under control is shown here. The level within the fluid buffer tank is controlled by a control valve on the inlet line into the tank. The level within the tank is measured with a level transmitter. There is an outlet line from the tank to supply fluid to the downstream users. The AP100 Advanced Process Controller is used to read the level transmitter's 4 to 20 milliamp signal through its analog input 1. It controls the control valve by outputting a 4 to 20 milliamp signal through its analog output channel 1. The AP100 device uses an internal PID controller to receive an input level measurement signal and to produce an output control valve position signal. The fluid level set point is entered into the AP100 device through the touchscreen display. Consider that a process change can occur downstream from the fluid buffer tank by one or more of the users that will cause a disturbance to the level measurement. The traditional PID controller scheme, as shown here, takes action only when the level measurement has been moved from the set point to produce a controller error. Thus, disturbance to stable operation is already in progress before a feedback controller first begins to respond. From this view, a feedback strategy simply starts too late, and at best, can only work to minimise the tank level upset as events unfold. In contrast, a feed forward controller measures the disturbance while it is still distant. As shown here, a feed forward element has been added, which is a flow meter on the outlet line of the fluid buffer tank. This flow meter is used to measure the disturbance caused by downstream users and shall be used to predict the impact that it will have on the fluid level, and then computes preemptive control actions. The goal is to maintain the fluid level to the controller set point value throughout the disturbance event. The control system block diagram for the feed forward PNID controller is shown here. The disturbance input is one or more of the downstream users having a sudden and significant change to fluid usage. The next step is to derive the equation for the feed forward computation. The feed forward computation is a function of flow rate out of the tank versus the change in level measured. If we rearrange the previous equation to solve for the fluid height h, it gives us equation 1 as shown here. The controlled element is a control valve's position signal connected to analog output channel 1. Now an equation needs to be derived to link the relationship between the rate of change of the control valve's position and the rate of change of fluid height. This is shown in equation 2. Where B and C are constants, Substituting equation 2 into equation 1 gives the following. The analog input signal, AI2, for the fluid flow rate shall be substituted into equation 3 for V out. The constants shall also be inserted into equation 3, which shall give the following equation. The rate of change of the control valve's position, delta AO1, shall be substituted with an intermediate variable, VAR1. Hence equation 4 shown here is the feed forward computation equation. To link this feed forward value, VAR1, to the PNID controller 1 output signal, and hence the control valve's position signal, the following equation 5 is derived. Both the equations 4 and 5, as shown here, shall be implemented in the AP100 device as shown in the following steps. 
This diagram visually depicts the equations that shall be set up internally within the AP100 Advanced Process Controller. The following steps shall explain how to link the level transmitter signal at analog input channel 1 to the PNID controller's input signal using equation 1. Then the feed forward computation shall be set up with equation 2 that evaluates the flow meter signal from analog input channel 2. Then equation 3 shall be used to produce the inlet line control valve's position signal from the PNID controller's output signal and the result from the feed forward computation of equation 2. The result from equation 3 shall be sent to the control valve through analog output channel 1. In the first step, we shall set up analog input channel 1 to receive the 4 to 20 milliamp signal from the level transmitter. Then we shall assign this input channel to the input of the PNID controller 1 using equation 1. To navigate to the analog input channel 1, press settings, then press input channel setup. Then press the corresponding setup for channel 1. Ensure that the upper and lower ranges are 20 milliamps and 4 milliamps respectively. Press the corresponding change button for the channel descriptor text and delete the default text value. Then enter in the desired user value. Press OK to accept and save. Now navigate back to the main menu. To link analog input to the PNID controller 1, we shall use an equation. Navigate to the equation summary screen and edit equation 1. Press the VAR button and select AI1 for analog input 1. Press OK to accept. Press the edit button on the results field. Then select the input signal for PNID 1. Enable equation 1 by pressing the corresponding enabled radio button. The next step is to set up analog input 2 for the flow meter input signal. Then set up the feed forward computation using equation 2. Set up analog input channel 2 in much the same way as analog input 1. Set the channel descriptor text to the desired value. Navigate to the equation summary in the same way before. Click edit for equation 2 and edit equation summary. Enter the feed forward computational equation The next step is to link the output of the PNID controller with the feed forward computation and then assign this result to the output channel 1 which drives the control valve. This shall be done using equation 3. Press the edit button for equation 3 and enter the equation shown earlier. Now that equation 3 is executing, the next step is to set up analog output 1. Change the output type to current and set the upper and lower ranges to 20 milliamps and 4 milliamps respectively.
Now that the input channels and output channels have been set up and all the internal signals have been linked using equations, the final step is to set up and tune the PNID1 controller. To navigate to the PNID1 setup, press PNID setup from the main menu, then PNID1 setup. This PNID controller shall be configured in direct acting mode, so ensure the corresponding radio button is set. In this example, we shall set up this PNID controller to have four input zones. Each input zone can have its own set of unique PNID gain constants. Having separate input zones enables better overall performance of the controller. Press the corresponding edit button for each gain constant, delete the default text and enter the desired value. Larger values for proportional gain constants have larger effect on controller output, whereas larger gains for integral and derivative gain constants have smaller effects on controller output. In this example, we shall configure this PNID controller to execute once every second by pressing the corresponding radio button. This controller is now set up and ready to execute. To start the controller, press the operator icon from the main menu, ensure the PNID controller is selected, then toggle to auto. Press the set point button and enter in the desired set point. For more information, please visit hazeltontechnologies.com.